The nurses that I had were very caring. She was there for me. We're educators and we are safety nets both for our providers and our patients. We're counselors. Registered nurses are the backbone of the healthcare system. Nurses promote health, prevent illness, and care for the people of all ages who are sick, injured, and dying. Nurses are there when uh, people are born. They're there at the very beginning, and they're there at the very end. That's really our job, to care for people all along the continuum. I get a chance to, a lot of times in ministry, see people at the end of their life. And so I, from a ministry side, I get to see the care that they receive. We're pretty much the patient's advocate. That's what we're there for. We are there to uh, be one-on-one -on -one with the patient. Since we see patients, you know, uh, probably 90% of the time they're seeing the nurse more than anyone, anybody else. Uh, they're always asking us questions. They're asking us a question regarding a medication or a procedure. We're the ones explaining that. We are here to put Band-Aids on, but we're also here to coordinate care between the students, the parents, the administrators, the teachers, the community. And if a student's not healthy, they are not able to learn. What I think public health nursing means for clients is it's a person who they can trust and tell that they have something going on, there's a problem, and that they can ask for help. And I think that's a huge thing in building that trusting relationship in order to get people to access services. If they're in some type of recovery, they're telling them what to expect. Uh, if they're having to take new medication, they're helping them to understand, you know, what do you need to do, what is really important. I think that as we get older and as you, you see that you're seeing more and more people that are in need of care just to do the simple things. The nurses are there to help them understand. To meet our state's growing health care needs, nurses go through extensive academic training. They learn to assess and treat illnesses, provide and manage care, communicate with and teach patients, and serve as the patient's advocates and leaders as healthcare changes. There are many options for nurses. Everyone comes to nursing program with background both in physical science and social science in really how to work better with people. We bring them here then in the profession of nursing and help facilitate their learning and guide them. We get a lot of clinical and practical experience here at the nursing school which is great. One of the big things we do is we come into the sim lab room and the patient has a certain problem and we have to search through their signs and symptoms um, to try to find out what's going on with them. And the wonderful staff here in the lab will help explain everything to us, will teach us different skills such as um, putting in NG tubes or catheters or IVs. And so we come in here and we practice on mannequins and on each other and then we are able to put that practice into our clinical setting and so in our clinical setting we actually get to go out into the public and work with real patients. Being an advocate really is how do you help people be the best for themselves? Nursing is becoming more and more diverse. You know, from a male perspective, um, we consider ourselves gender minorities because there's only 6% of us in the profession. In nursing schools, they're admitting, you know, almost 20% of um, nursing classes are men. Ethnic minorities is the same sort of thing. For whatever reason, folks didn't go into nursing. But I think the, the playing fields start to level out now, and more and more people are really looking at other issues of getting in nursing. I guess my points with working with minority populations is really encouraging individuals in, to go in into, into healthcare. And um, one of my main things with reducing health disparities is trying to get more minorities going into those healthcare professions because I think that's probably going to be the biggest impact um, in reducing health disparities is getting more individuals from diverse populations going into those professions. It was one of the careers that I knew that once I finished, I would always have a job. Everybody's always getting sick, injured, or we're all getting older, so healthcare is very important to our community. There's always going to be work for nurses. Uh, one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize about military nursing is that there is a military opportunity for just about every type of nursing that's available in the civilian world, so um, I never would have guessed that you can do pediatric nursing in the military or um, 
you know, that I would be in a family health clinic in the military. There's a lot of roles that nurses can be in, uh, in our society. They can be home health nurses, school nurses, clinic nurses, nurses that work in hospitals. There's some nurses that um, provide just individual one-on-one -on -one care for people in their home, military nurses as well. I'm a public health officer and uh, I'm doing that role. I've never worked a, a day in a hospital and I'm, and I'm a nurse. I liked science, I liked health, I liked taking care of people, and that's what I did. And the way I see it is, I didn't really choose nursing, nursing chose me. And we're here to provide the best health care. In addition to our population getting older and more diverse, as many as 300,000 more people in Washington State will be eligible for health care under the health care law, and we will need a lot more nurses to meet the demand. To learn more about nursing or how to become a nurse, visit wacenterfornursing.org. It's about Washington's health.